Thank you very much and welcome everybody to our presentation. I hope that in spite of the online, we can make ourselves understood. Uh, our presentation has uh, two parts. At first, uh, I will give an overview of these two parts. And then in the second part, uh, Ulrika will have a more practical introduction demonstration. Our topic is uh, about the cognates. The cognates are already waiting here, are waiting for the learners in the new language. And the goal of this presentation is to show up an approach, a redlingual approach to cognitive disambiguation in second and other languages for the learners. There have been about 70 years of studies on cognates that we looked at in uh, foreign language teaching. Many publications already in the 1950s and especially in the past uh, decades, different studies. I just want to show these point to these publications and then uh, show our approach framed in uh, language teaching theory, language learning theory, based on Krashen's uh, theory of uh, monitor effects or monitor approach. And um, then we also mention uh, problems of learners and work out some methods that can be used in a classroom. So uh, there have been lots of bilingual word lists prepared. If you look at uh, slide two, uh, some illustrations to help the learners who have difficulties with the so-called false friends or cognates, which can be good friends or false friends. And um, I go quickly to the third slide uh, and introduce four studies, which will be shown in more detail, of course, in a paper. At first, uh, Molnar, uh, in a, her study, shows that cognitive recognition in the third language vocabulary helps really the vocabulary acquisition. And uh, Van Hove and Bertala in 2015, in their publication, point out that through their studies and through a lot of other evidence, cognate guessing skills help to speed up language learning from the childhood to even to the late 20s of the people growing up. And then we have other studies of cognate effects on L2 lexical choice. And we even have a, a study where Chinese, English, non-related languages have been compared in this uh, respect. What we want here is to show how the approach to we're talking about uh, cognates can be fit into the series of theories. And we have found that Krashen's monitor hypothesis is the best way to locate or frame uh, our approach. If in our assumption we assume that the cognates are already existing in the native language of the speaker, then the new meanings would belong, would be a task for the monitor. So that means the learner will have no conflict with the already existing part. So he, he won't have problem with the affective filter. It is there already. And through the monitor, he has to learn to deal with the production, with a correct production of forms and of the grammatical output. So for that, uh, of course, there were already other researchers who have made suggestions that have listed them 
slide five and slide six um, examples of how vocabulary development can be applied to the classroom teaching. These examples are from the Hispanic and English uh, area. However, um, through our changed situation, since we are dealing with many languages in classrooms over the last decades, we need to think of multilingual and multicultural classrooms. So we have to expand these original assumptions and uh, the original approaches of dealing with uh, cognates, cognate teaching. An interesting example would be uh, on slide seven, if you look at how to visualize the cognates in the students' minds. This is, of course, about the Slavic languages, but I like this visualization because the teacher could make such visualization of the languages of the learners and languages cognates existing already in the classroom, the good friends and the false friends. Now, uh, back to our approach. We have started Redilingua a few years ago, which is a system of authentic corpus-based language teaching. And it is very much capable of dealing with the teaching of cognates. And in the second part of our presentation, I would like to pass talking now to Ulrike, who will introduce the demonstrate how it what it looks like in practice. Thank you. Yes. Also a very warm welcome from my side. My name is Ulrike Glavic, and I would like to demonstrate you now Redilingua with uh, cognates. As Joseph Sarkos already mentioned, we have authentic materials. This means speech recordings aligned with texts in English, German, French, Italian and Spanish. So the genre of our uh, corpus are news, audiobooks, speeches, um, and we have fresh and up-to-date materials added every week for English and German. And here you also see the corpora sizes, 50 hours in English, 41 hours German, 20 hours French, five hours Italian and one hour Spanish. So the Italian and Spanish corpora, they are much smaller. Now let's go to the system. So that's already lingua already logged in. Here you see at first, all the languages that we have. So English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, a little bit of Chinese. Let me show just how such a material would look like. Here we have news in English, uh, the emission of uh, last Thursday, uh, 9th of September. And let's just play, just begin to play so that you see how, how speech and text are aligned. The Taliban is allowing around 200 foreigners, including a large group of Americans, to leave Afghanistan. The Taliban is also banning any unapproved forms of protest, although some demonstrations and other acts of defiance have been reported inside the country. So here you see that uh, you can listen to these authentic materials and everything that is spoken is also highlighted in the text. You can not only play continuously, but you can also play stepwisely, stop after each speech unit. Then what occurs that the recording stops after the speech unit. Although some demonstrations and other acts of defiance have been reported inside the country. Then it stops and you can go to the next The Taliban one. presented their new interim government yesterday. It is mainly Taliban hardliners and excludes women. So you see how you can uh, 
acquire language with these type of authentic material. And let's assume that in this part, the word eventually would occur. Eventually is one of these eventuell and eventually is one of these cognates in English and German that have different meanings in the languages. So if we apply the search func function here, you find uh, seven search results and you can listen to each and any one of them. In 2020, we knew what we had to do. In 2021, we want to know that things will get back to normal eventually. So here the word eventually actually means finally or at the end. We look at this one. Also that the ragged man's body had eventually been found in the river near the ferry landing. Again, eventually means finally. Morning came eventually. And so on. I think if you look at this list, you can de deduct the meaning of eventually just from the context. And if we now go to the German corpus and type in the word eventuell, we also find some search results. Zunächst morgen eventuell Angehörige der Bundeswehr ausgeflogen. Here eventuell means probably or possibly. Durch einen eventuellen Korridor, der möglicherweise auch noch gesichert werden könnte, aber es ist im Moment wirklich alles. Uh yes, here eventuell a corridor means a possible corridor. And there are some other findings here or search results. Eventuell müsse das Paketzentrum noch geschlossen werden. Seit gestern ist klar, dass sich das Frachtzentrum. Yes, again, here eventuell means possibly or probably or perhaps. So this is an example of a more or less easy uh, cognate pair for both uh, English and German. But there are other pairs la that where we have different meanings, even inside the same word. And such a word pair is the word brand and brand, brand in English, brand in, ger in German. So if we look at the word brand in English, you see here he did launch the world's most famous. He did launch the world's most famous cybersecurity brand. That so here brand means a trade name or a label. And then here we have whiskey or apple brandy. And Bob and Tom poured a spoonful of water in the sugar and the mite of whiskey or apple brandy in the bottom of their tumblers. And get so brandy here means distilled wine. And the last one here that I want to show is... Mary gave him a brand new Barlow knife worth 12 and a half cents. So brand new here has nothing to do with, with a trademark or distilled wine. Brand new simply means completely new. And the other uh, search results are in the same uh, line. So let's look at the German corpus for the word, word Brand. Here we have a lot of search results. And interesting here, if you listen to that one, haben Sie heute ein brandneues Klimavorsorgepaket vorgelegt? Brand usually means fire in German, but here brand, brand neu is brand new. Obviously, this word exists in both languages, English and German, and, and has the com identical meaning, namely uh, completely new. But the other, most of the other occurrences actually have something to do with fire. Here we have Waldbrände, bushfires. Extreme Wetterereignisse häufen sich in den letzten Jahren. Waldbrände, Dürren und jetzt das Hochwasser nach den tagelangen schweren Regenfällen. Then we have Brand Brandenburg is a name. So then here interesting Brandbeschleuniger. It's a compound word. Die Corona-Krise wirke wie ein Brandbeschleuniger, heißt es in der Beschlussvorlage. In 
Here we have Flächenbrand, another compound word. Then Lagebericht am Tag nach den Bränden. Another compound word is Großbrand, a very big fire. So verbrachten die erste Nacht nach dem Großbrand tausende Menschen auf den Straßen rund um das abgebrannte Lager. Then an idiom erneute Brände, new fires. Machten erneute Brände in der vergangenen Nacht einen Strich durch die Rechnung. Then Folgen des Brandes, the consequences of the fire. Here we have the danger of bushfires, Waldbrand, Gefahr. So it's a compound word with three different uh, nouns in one word. So German, German is famous for that, for these longer compound words. Akut steigt die Waldbrandgefahr. Here we have Brandmeister, so the, the fire officer. Der Brandmeister des Kreises Zollernalp, Stefan Hermann, war das. There are many more Brandmauer, so you find here a whole list of compound words and Brandgefährlich is another adjective. There's even a second page of results. And also interestingly, there is a word Brandung that has has the word brand in it, but has nothing to do at all with, uh, with a brand, with brand, with fire. It's the opposite. It's a lot of water. It's the sea that, that comes to the shore. It's more a literary word. Auf den Strand in die Brandung. Ich halte darauf hin. So I think, so that we think that looking at these search results for the word brand, a learner will get a big picture of how this word brand can be used in both compound words, in idioms, in adjectives. And he or she will not only learn how to distinguish the word brand from the English counterpart brand, but he or she will also learn that this word brand can be in very many different contexts. Uh, and it he or she will learn how to use this word in these various contexts. So I think this small demo should have given you an impression how you can search uh, the corpora of Redilingua for various languages. So you can, for each language you can give, you can enter a search term and get a list of, a list of search results. And as Our corpus grows, is growing every week. Uh, the corpora will get bigger and bigger and you will find more and more words that you can enter and get significant search results. Let's go back to our um, slides. Let's go back to the conclusions. And maybe Joseph Sakos and I, we can conclude together that uh, Redilingua offers learning activities with cognates in the framework of Krashen's five hypotheses. And I hope I were, was able to show you that Redilingua leads to not only to learning of cognate, cognates just in, in a very limited way, but also in a very wide and broad, broad way and leads to augmented learning. We developed uh, Redilingua as, a, as an approach that is extensible to many more languages and to cognates across multiple languages. If you want to uh, find more examples, uh, which I started publishing uh, examples on LinkedIn, you can follow LinkedIn with Redilingua. And here are our contacts, our mail addresses, We are happy to answer questions and we thank you very much for your attention. It was our pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.